Local 7 and 103.7 WTIB present Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, sports, and community information and everything that's going on around town. Now, with Talk of the Town, here's your host, Henry Hinton. Okay, welcome in, everybody. We are live on location this morning at Krispy Kreme in Greenville, and we are kicking off the uh, Valentine season. We got the singing Valentine's guys down here this morning, the Barbershop Quartet, the Fortune Cookies that are going to sing another number for us in a minute. And we are giving away free donuts. If you're listening to us this morning, uh, come on in between now and 9 o'clock. You'll get a free Krispy Kreme Valentine donut just for coming in and saying that you are listening to us on the radio. Got a big uh, show this hour. We mentioned that the Barbershop Quartet will sing again. McGee is here. Good morning, McGee. Good morning, Ann. Carly Swain is actually with us this morning. Hello. What an honor. <laughs> First time ever. That's what I was telling never had, never had Carly with this us is, on We're location. like breaking new ground, apparently, yeah, having yeah. a news person. This is a little cream. different, isn't it? A little yeah, different. it yeah. is. And uh, we've got a great guest coming up, too, with the Super Bowl coming up on Sunday. The New England Patriots and the um, Seattle Seahawks. Uh, East Carolina, former East Carolina running back great Tony Collins who played for the New England Patriots and played in Super Bowl 20 is going to be here in just a couple excuse me just a couple of minutes so if you've never met Tony Collins he's going to be here live in just a few minutes and uh, Tony's got an interesting story we were just looking at some some of the articles that were written up in Boston about his career and um, how he um, you know the kind of his story with the New England Patriots and so We'll be talking to Tony Collins here in just a couple of minutes as well. Look, looking forward to that. Uh, McGee, big sports weekend coming up. East Carolina's at home tomorrow. Uh, one o'clock tip, I believe, right? Uh, one, uh, Sunday. Is it Sunday? Sunday. Cincinnati. Yeah. Yep. Cincinnati coming to town, and Cincinnati's good. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. They're so we good. need a big crowd out. Yep. Yep. But, but you that, need- that's the perfect Super Bowl. You go to church, you go watch the game at one o'clock, you that's go right. home and watch the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. All one day. Yeah. Big weekend. Exactly. So uh, Pirates will uh, pay, play at 1 o'clock. And um, then, of course, the Super Bowl coming up on uh, Sunday night. And you're picking the Seahawks. Picking the Seahawks. The actual line has dropped all the way down to 1. New England's favored by a point. Tell me why it was two weeks ago everybody was saying, well, there's no way New England can lose this game and Seattle can't compete and yada, yada. And now everybody says it's going to be a tight game. I think it's a lot has to do with the, the, the fleet gate. And Why? that playing a factor in people thinking it's going to be You think now the balls are going to be fully pumped no, up? And, so and New somehow <laughs> that, just the talk of it, just the distraction, the aura of it being there is going to impact them. The distraction of it is going to impact them somehow. Some way. I'm not saying it is, but I think maybe that's why the line has dropped. Seattle can easily compete with New England, okay? The, especially from an offensive standpoint. So, I don't, I don't you know. I don't it's think there's two unevenly matched teams. It's all about stretch. the crazy running back, isn't it? Marshawn Lynch, he's got to have a big game. Yeah. I was yeah. listening to Steve yeah. Logan yesterday saying that he thinks that Seattle's receivers cannot beat New England, that they've got to do it with Marshawn Lynch. And so he expects the, the New England defense to rough Marshawn Lynch up. Well, if they have to beat him with Marshawn Lynch, he's the guy you want to try to beat him with because he's he's that good of a back. Despite his antics yeah. on the field, he's that good. And his antics off the field. And his antics Or maybe off the we field. should say his lack of antics off there the field. There you go. Have you ever interviewed anybody, Carly, that just says, I'm just here so I won't get fined? <laughs> no, no, I'm just no, here, so it won't no. get fun. I've had someone say I'm here because my mom told me to come. That, yeah, that right? yeah, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so Carly has been out covering uh, some uh, things this morning. You had, you were out early this morning covering a fire in Grimesland today. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't have more neighbors who woke up there on Ariel Drive, just off Highway 33. When you get into the uh, kind of the part of 33 that slows down to 35 miles an hour you make a left there off river road and um i mean four different fire departments called out this morning the, the all of ariel drive was lit up like a christmas tree and just lights and sirens going thankfully no one was home at the time the fire chief is telling me there's no furniture inside this mobile home either so they don't believe anyone lives there so that's why it's even odder that this you know we had a, a fire no lightning strikes with any of those showers overnight and into the morning so they're working to figure out what started that yeah, well, I'm glad no one was hurt. Yeah, that's the big I was watching your deal. live reports this morning. All right, it's 10 minutes after uh, 8 o'clock. We're going to get a break in so we can get the Fortune cookies in here. You guys going to sing my favorite this next time? We're going to sing this my, for you. My, my Wild hey, Irish now. Rose coming up from the Fortune cookies. 
are singing Valentine's this morning. And uh, these guys will actually come to your home or your business and sing a singing Valentine to your sweetie, to that special person in your life, a romantic singing Valentine by a barbershop quartet. They'll sing two love songs, bring a Valentine card and a red rose for just $40. But you have to reserve the time, right? You have to set up a reservation, and now's the time to do it because these guys get busy. And do you only do it on Valentine's Day? Thursday, Friday, Thursday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Because the offices are closed on yeah on Friday. Okay. So, uh, by the way, I'll go ahead and give you the number if you want to uh, order a singing Valentine, 321-7992, 321-7992. And we're going to hear them sing My Wild Irish Rose when we come back live. And then Tony Collins will join us live at Krispy Kreme. And, again, until 9 o'clock this morning, you'll get a free donut just for coming down and saying that you're listening to us on Talk of the Town, a free Valentine's donut. So come join the fun this morning. We're having a good time at Krispy Kreme. We will be right back with more Talk of the Town. Okay, welcome back. We're on location live at Krispy Kreme this morning. We are kicking off the Valentine's season. we got the Barbershop Quartet, the Fortune Cookies here this morning, and they're going to sing to us. And, by the way, Tony Collins is here. So Tony Collins of the New England Patriots has joined us live here this morning, and we're going to talk to Tony in a minute. Let me uh, reintroduce the Fortune Cookies, our singing Barbershop Quartet. Let's go down the line. You are. Uh, good morning. Jack Fisher here, baritone. All right. Ken Gibson, bass. All right. Uh, Bruce McGee, lead. Randy Driggers, tenor. All right, very good. These guys have been singing all morning down here in our first uh, hour, and now they're going to sing another one this morning. This was, this was by request, right, Ken? This is the one I asked for. Uh, you asked for it. Also, McGee asked for it, oh, too. Yeah, y'all yeah, have some, good taste. We, we have good taste. You're right. You guys sing this one every year. It's become a tradition. All right, here we go. The singing Valentine this morning. The Fortune Cookies singing My Wild Irish Rose. Here we go. My Wild Irish Rose The sweetest flower that grows You may search everywhere but none can compare with my wild Irish rose. Irish rose. My wild Irish rose. My rose. The dearest flower that grows. And someday for my sake, she may let me take the bloom from my wild Irish rose, my rose. The bloom from my wild Irish rose, wild Irish rose. All right. <laughs> The Fortune Cookies. Wonderfully done, as Thank always. Thank you very much, guys. And again, uh, Ken, tell folks how they can order up a singing Valentine and how it, how it works. Okay, just call 321-7992. That's my number. And if I'm not there, just leave a message. Uh, a quartet from the Carolina Chord Connection, maybe us or another quartet, will come to your home or place of business. It will sing to your special person two love songs. Present them with a Valentine's card and a red rose, all from you. All right, very good. And uh, you guys will say this is your Valentine gift from your hubby or your wife or whatever. From whoever, yes. And uh, price, what a great uh, price is forty dollars. Forty dollars, and it goes to charity. You've been working with the autism group and the uh, Third Street Community Center. Right. Thank you, Ken. Thanks to all the guys for coming down. All right, very good. Shall we do news? Are you ready? Can we do that, Michael? Let's flip back over to uh, Carly Swain, who is standing by now with our very latest news headlines live here at Krispy Kreme. And uh, Carly has the very latest from WITN. Good morning, Carly. Good morning, Henry. Yeah, 819 on this Friday morning. Some breaking news from overnight as fire crews were called out to battle a blaze in Grimesland in Pitt County uh, just before sunrise this morning. They had fire trucks flooding aerial drive. The fire chief there tells me that no one was inside the mobile home at the time of the blaze. Chief Tina Dixon says that when they did get to 4728 Aerial Drive in Grimesland, deputies saw flames up to 20 feet.
feet high. No word yet on a cause of that fire. No one was injured, so we'll, they'll be continuing to investigate. We'll follow up with investigators as they figure out how that blaze started. In other news this morning, the dad accused of intentionally overdosing his eight-month-old with allergy medicine also goes to court today. 24-year-old Tyler Potter of Grantsboro in Pamlico County is due before a judge this morning. The district attorney says that Potter gave his son, Braden, an overdose of the main ingredient in Benadryl. The child died as a result, according to the DA. Weeks later, Potter allegedly attacked a bail bondsman with a machete. We'll be in court today to see what, ha to see what happens next in his case. It took 12 people about an hour to decide that one man should spend the next seven years of his life in prison after a deadly hit and run. Brandon Yaw was on trial for the December 12, 2013 death of 23-year-old Jessica Anderson. According to a police report from that night, officers say that Yaw was in a physical confrontation with someone else, and when he moved his car forward, it hit Anderson. Police say that Yaw left the scene and was found two hours later. After that verdict came in Thursday afternoon, Yaw pleaded guilty to being a habitual felon. Arguments will be heard today in a lawsuit challenging a new election rule in our state. Some voters in North Carolina are challenging the photo ID mandate, the rule that makes voters show photo identification before they can cast ballots. The trial is in Wake County today, where the judge will either choose to throw out or uphold the requirement. Voters argue the requirement violates the state's constitution because it expands the qualifications citizens need to vote. The state attorney says you've always needed to establish your identity. Three federal lawsuits are challenging the rules set for trial this summer. We'll let you know what the Wake County judge decides. That's a look at All your right. WITN News update at 822 this morning. Henry? This is a new way of doing everything. We're sliding <laughs> yeah, everybody around. In the booth. Well, we've been, I've been moving back and forth with the quartet here. we got to do our weather update. And uh, our weather update for the uh, rest of the weekend. Today we're looking for mostly cloudy and then gradually becoming sunny today. With a high temperature near 48 degrees, going to be breezy with a northwest wind. Could be breezy this afternoon. May get wind gusts up to 22 miles an hour today. So this afternoon is going to be kind of windy. And then tonight, uh, very cold tonight. Overnight low down to 24. And then Saturday, sunshine and a high near 44. And then on Sunday, cloudy with a high near 52 degrees for Super Bowl Sunday. And the winds will calm down a little bit. And then Monday, we could get some rain, about a 60% chance of it before noon or so on Monday. That is our weather update, our news update. We are live at Krispy Kreme. Carly Swain has been nice enough to join us after being on TV this morning. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for coming. Wet rat frizzy hair. No, Sorry. no, you look great. Can't you look help great. it. <laughs> and uh, Tony, did you meet Tony yet? No, not yet. He just came in, and we're oh. going to take a break and come back. He says he's got the answer to deflate gate. He just told me that. Really? He says, I know what happened to the footballs. Huh. This guy played in Super Bowl twenty. He played for the New England Patriots. He was a superstar running back at East Carolina back in the day. And he's here live this morning. Come on down and meet Tony Collins this morning. He's got a new book that he's just released. And uh, we're going to talk to Tony about his life in football and what he thinks about the Super Bowl coming up on Sunday. Tony Collins up next live on Talk of the Town, 24 now after 8 o'clock. We'll be right back. Don't forget, you still have time, about 26 minutes or so, to get down here and get a free donut this morning. They're giving away free Krispy Kreme Valentine Donuts if you come in and say you're listening to us on the radio. We'll be right back with Tony Collins. Okay, welcome back. We're on location live this morning, and we are live at uh, Krispy Kreme, and the Valentine's kickoff continues. Still giving away Valentine's of donuts this morning. If you come down to Krispy Kreme, say you're listening to us, you'll get a free Valentine's donut. So not a bad deal. We've had the Fortune cookies this morning. And now the, uh, the star of the show, the guy we've been talking about all morning. We're excited that Tony Collins has joined us live. You know, uh, back in my day, he was Anthony Collins. <laughs> AC. AC. You know who gave you that name? Uh, who did give you that name? You probably do. I that. gave it my name. Oh, you that. you did <laughs> that. Anthony Anthony was too long, so I just cut it short and said AC. Just call me AC. You know I you know I remember Dick Jones was doing the radio back then, mm -hmm. and I remember a, every time you take off on a long run, which was often. <laughs> I remember Dick Jones goes, there goes AC. He's turning on the afterburners. <laughs> <laughs> but you had a great career at East Carolina. You uh, ended up going and playing in the uh, NFL for what, like 10 years? Eight years. Eight years. Eight years. Most of it was with the New England Patriots, mm -hmm. but you finished your career in Miami, right? Miami Dolphins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Good to see you. Fantastic. Good to see you. We had a little golf outing, McGee. 
I remember a couple I heard, years ago I over at Cutter Creek, and I yeah. didn't really know Tony. I think we'd met, but I hadn't, didn't know. But we we both got some golf tips that day. Yeah. And now his game is all tightened up, and he wants, <laughs> he I heard wants him to say go he's again. Gotten better. So, you want to go again? I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it, man. Let's uh, do it. Uh, I, t- you, I tell everybody, I, 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 talk, I talk 80, I, I, I dress 90, and I play 100. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I remember about the day we played? You, you know, we played in that Celebrity Pro-Am right. deal over at Cutter Creek before the uh, professional tournament over there. And I remember you you were, you were had a pro with you. I had a pro right. with me, and right. we were playing against each other. We were in the same foursome. But what I remember about it was the, uh, the pros were giving us tips. Yeah. And uh, I just remember you being – you were, like, really into listening to every tip that oh, you yeah. get. Because it is a unique opportunity to play golf with a golf professional. It's yeah. a tough sport, man. I mean, yeah. I, I give a lot of respect to those pro golfers, man, because yeah. to be consistent like they are, it takes a, it's, it's a lot of yeah. work. Yeah. A lot of work. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. All right, let's talk about we'll – talk, we'll, we'll, we'll work backwards. Let's talk about the Super Bowl. Okay. I want to talk about your career with the New England Patriots and uh, what you're doing today and everything. But let's talk about Sunday. New England Patriots – McGee says that they're so distracted by Deflate Gate that that is giving the Seahawks an edge. Do you buy into all that well, mental? Well, 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 well I, I think that's lo- I think that's lowered the the point spread down to one, which is why it's <laughs> one. They're favored by one. Now you played the game. Does that make any sense to you? I think I think it's an advantage for us. I really do. The the way Belichick is, the way Brady is, and and, and those group of guys. You know, every, everybody's kind of like against them right now. They, everybody think that, you know, they cheated. And they, they've been cheated. They're cheaters. And, yeah. and so we want to prove, and they want to prove, yeah. that, you know, they can get out there and, and beat a, a quality team. And Seattle is a great football team. They have a great defense. They got a great coach. They got a great quarterback. And it, it'll be a quality win for us. And I, I really feel that we can, we can pull it off. You know, you, you mentioned an interesting point. Everybody thinks the Patriots are cheaters now. You know, you had Spygate, now you got Deflategate. Gate. But, you know, I, I thought it was really interesting that uh, Belichick made the point the other day, you know, <laughs> okay, we paid the price for what happened during Spygate, but keep in mind, we just got caught. Everybody else was doing it. Right. And what we were doing was videotaping a guy that was doing something in front of 60,000 people. So <laughs> and everybody does it. Yeah. It's the same thing with uh, Deflate Gate. I mean, it's the same exact thing. What, what do you do? You buy the Deflate Gate thing? Do you think that the no, Patriots deflated I, the football? Not purposely. Yeah. You know, Tom Brady likes his ball a certain a certain way, as low as they can possibly go. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that uh, in every game that he they go into, uh, the trainer or the ball boy, whoever that guy is, deflates that ball as low as he can possibly go. And maybe on that Sunday he deflated him just a little bit too low. And, you know, mm-hmm. it was, what, 11 out of the 12 balls were deflated too low. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it, but, it's, but not, Doug, it's, not, it's not nothing that they tried to do. But Doug Raymond has the theory that the one ball that was not deflated was the ball that the kicker used. <laughs> well, the kicker doesn't even use those balls. Oh, is that right? No, they don't even use them. They, they have their own balls that they use. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that, there goes that theory. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't buy it then? You don't not buy that they did anything illegal? Not, not purposely. No, yeah. not at all. Not yeah. at all. Mm-mm. So how I mean, you, they they... they they didn't have to do that. I mean, yeah. you know, to, to, to beat the Colts, I mean, they, they scored, I think, 17 points in the first half with the deflated balls. They scored 28 points in the second half. Yeah, but they didn't know they were going to do that at the beginning of the game when uh, the balls were deflated. Uh, of course not, but yet still, <laughs> uh, I, I think LeGarrette Bunt had about 30 carries. Yeah. You know, come on, man. Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, you know, I kind of liken it to what you see in baseball. Remember, look, from right here in Eastern, remember Gaylord Perry when he mm-hmm. played baseball? I mean, there's no, there's no doubt that he was throwing the spinner, and he had something. In fact, he got caught yeah, several caught. times with Vaseline or something under his cap. Yeah. Or always, you always want to get that advantage. Yeah. And, and what, how they do it for the quarterbacks now, it's, it's, a, it's an offensive game. Yeah. They want those quarterbacks to have that, 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 that perfect ball that they want. They want the receivers to catch. They want touchdowns. And so, you know, everybody does it. Matter of fact, I think, I think it's Aaron Rodgers. He likes his ball to mm-hmm. play the – Inflated more, or whatever. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's 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 a quarterback game. Interesting. Tony Collins, uh, the former great running back for the New England Patriots and the East Carolina Pirates, uh, live with us here this morning. How, how do you see this? Game? Well, let me ask you this question: For the, the this week has been a zoo. Yeah. The media thing is a zoo. I heard you talking to Heather King on WITN earlier this week about when you played in Super Bowl Twenty. 
there was a, a fraction of the number of media people that are out there. To, this this media thing going out there in Phoenix, it's an absolute zoo with the whole Marshawn Lynch thing and all that. It's crazy. It, it, it's it's a it's a it's a show. I mean, it really is. Yeah. I think we had maybe fifty to hundred media people at, at the at our game, yeah. and you know that was Chicago Bears. This is big time, and yeah. so uh, now it was, it was 80, over 5, 86, 85. 85. Now they have five thousand. Yeah, and I don't know if you you watched the media day they had it on ESPN. They 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 sold tickets for fans, <laughs> but did you hear some of the questions that they were asking the guys? No. You know, what type of music do you like? I mean, do you like to dance? I mean, what does that got to do with football? Did you get any of those questions? No, it was all about all, all about football. football. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just it's just a big show now. I mean, it's great. It's great for TV. It's great for the media, and it and it's and it's fantastic. But come on, man, you selling tickets for media day? It's all about making money, man. It's yeah. all about the money. That's crazy. That's crazy. All right, so uh, who's going to win? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Everybody wants to know. I'm not going to run out and put money on it, but there are probably people listening who will. So <laughs> yeah, this is the deal. It's going to be a close game. It's going to come down to the last drive. Patriots are going to have the ball. They're going to they're gonna drive down the field. Uh, either kick a field goal or, or score a touchdown to win the game in the last couple seconds. It's gonna be a close game. What do you think of uh, what do you think of Marshawn Lynch and the way he's dealing with the media? <laughs> it's a show. <laughs> I mean, it really is a show. Marshawn Lynch, uh, unfortunately, he's losing money because he's because of all the fines that he had uh, that he's yeah. getting. But he's making money on the other end because he's not talking. And he's got a pro progressive uh, 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 commercial. He's got a Skittles commercial because he doesn't <laughs> talk to the media. That's the only reason why. I'm pretty, you know, he 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 chews. He, he eats Skittles on the football field. Mm -hmm. That is not logical for anybody. I'll be out there uh, eating candy when they're playing football. <laughs> I mean, who does that? But you know, that's 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 the media thing. So, but but you know, my you know, I, I'm kind of old school. Different. I remember guys like you that played the game and didn't showboat and do all that stuff. I mean, the guy you know t scores a touchdown, he grabs his crotch and all that. I mean. <laughs> You know, come on. You know, you, yeah. you still have some responsibility as a professional athlete to maintain some level of dignity, don't you? Honestly? Absolutely. I, and that's the thing that, that really, um, you know, when you know you see kids that are looking up to him, he does a lot for the community in Oakland. He gives back a lot. But for, for someone to, to, for you know, as a football player, growing up as a kid, man, I, I, man, I like Jim Brown and Tony Dorsett, these guys who, man, I, I wanted to be like. But, you know, how can you tell your kid, you know, I want you to be like Marshawn Lynch? No, you don't want him to be like Marshawn Lynch. It's, 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 it's not good for the NFL. I mean, it, it, but, you know, he's his own person. From what I understand, he's a great teammate. He's a great guy in the locker room. He's a great leader in the locker room. But, you know, he's doing his own thing, and I can't, I can't knock him for that. I mean, he, that's, his, that's the way he wants to live his life, so, so be it. You know, you have such a parallel between – Marshawn Lynch, and then you got a guy like Russell Wilson, mm -hmm. who you know just you, you you look at him and he you say yeah now that that guy's everything that's right about yeah. professional sports yeah you know absolutely yeah you a big fan of his big fan of Russell I think um, I'm not going to be a big fan of him on Sunday but <laughs> I, I am a big fan of his because of because of how he how he lives his life and he's he's true uh, uh, just a all around guy all around great guy and, and a great football player as well so I, I think. Uh, one of the keys in the game is making sure that he doesn't get out of that pocket and start running on us. Cause yeah. I'm more afraid of Russell Wilson than I am of Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 What do you remember about Super Bowl? Get, take us back to when you uh, played in Super Bowl Twenty. The, 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 the greatest thing I remember is running out on that field, man, right before that game. Running out on that field. Where was field, it played? In New Orleans. Yeah. In the Superdome. Yeah. You know, it's – Fantastic running out on that field. You got you got millions and millions of people watching you, and uh, that 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 feeling that you 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 can never you can never, I can't even describe how, how you feel on, on something like biggest game of your life, something that you dream about all your life about playing in the Super Bowl, and you play in it. And first first quarter, Walter Payton gets the ball. Their first series, Walter Payton fumbles the ball. Walter Payton fumbles the ball. We get the ball in their 15 yard line. Okay. We're thinking now. Here we go, because the whole the whole uh, playoffs. You know, we been, we was uh, getting turnovers. The whole we led the league in turnovers that year. Yeah. And so I said, here we go. We're, we're getting ready to put something on the Chicago Bears. Game. It's a game of inches. 
Tony Eason throws the ball to, to Stanley Morgan in end zone. I can't remember the linebacker. But the linebacker just gets a little tip on the ball, and Stanley misses the ball, and we settle for a field goal. From then on, it was downhill, man, yeah. from there. You it guys was, lost big that day. Yeah, 46 to 10. Yeah, it yeah. was it yeah. was tough, tough game. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, that was the debut for the Patriots' first ever Super Bowl, correct? Yeah, first first, first, first ever Super Bowl. That that year was a fantastic year for us. We we, we were a playoff, uh, a wild card team. We won every game on the road. We went to New York, beat them, went went out to L.A. Nobody thought we were going to beat the Raiders, beat them. Then we went, came back to Miami, the Dolphins. We haven't won down there in 16 years, so nobody thought we were going to win. Everybody thought it was going to be the Chicago Bears and the Miami Dolphins. That year, the Miami Dolphins was the only team that beat the Chicago Bears. And so everybody wanted that matchup again. And so you know, we, we put a hurting on the Dolphins that year. Was this the Jim McMahon years? Jim you know, McMahon years, this, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, Super Bowl you, shuffle. <laughs> yeah, that was that Richard was, Dent. Yeah. Richard Dent, all yeah. those guys. Well, you know, and uh, uh, Refrigerator Perry. Yep. You know, have you seen the uh, have you seen the the uh, real sports that's running right now with uh, McMahon and Refrigerator Perry and those guys? You from what I, from, uh, Refrigerator Perry's not doing too well right no, now. No, you know, you need to watch it. That Brian yeah. Gumble thing is showing on HBO right now. McMahon's not doing well. Yeah, he's not either. McMahon yeah. is like uh, you know he's suffering from dementia. Uh, Refrigerator Perry can hardly walk. He hasn't been seen in public in a while. Uh, a bunch of guys from that uh, Chicago Bears team suffering from big-time head injuries and stuff like that. You know, the league has done a lot toward that and trying to make players safer in recent years. But, you know, for a guy who played in your era that comes out with no dementia, with no, and I'm, I'm a, I hope you don't have any major health problems. No, I mean you got to consider yourself pretty lucky. I'm I'm very blessed to to be in the position that I am. The only thing that I had was I had to get two new knees uh, about two years ago. Doctor Hasty did them for me. Fantastic job. I can play as I, before. I think I had I had the operation after I played. After we played in that tournament, yeah, maybe so. I was hurting bad, man. Yeah, I was yeah. hurting really, really so bad. You, so you've experienced some of it too. Oh yeah, I, and, yeah. and was your was your knee damage from getting hit, more, or just from more, wear and tear? More, you more think? from the wear and tear and the yeah. pounding of the turf. See, back yeah. then the turf yeah. that we played in, man, was just it right. was terrible. It yeah. was really, yeah. really bad. So right. Yeah. But you know, the the, the uh, I think the NFL is going to have to do more for those guys. I mean, they're they. There's a lot of guys suffering right now that, uh, that and they're out of money too. A lot of them. Yeah. I mean, it's, they, did, they didn't. You guys didn't make the big money. These guys are. Making. No, we sure didn't. I, you know, I, I tell everybody. You know, I, I tell everybody, man. I, I was I was born in the wrong time. Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> I was a second round draft choice, and you know, second round draft choices, their their signing bonus, you know, probably two million, maybe, yeah. maybe three million sometimes, depending on who you are or what position that you play. My 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 signing bonus was sixty thousand dollars, and I mm. thought I was the richest guy in the world, right, man. Right, yeah. <laughs> I was happy. And sixty thousand back in those days was nothing to sneeze at, but yeah. it's it's chump change compared to what the guys get today. Oh, uh, it's incredible, but yeah, yeah they they're, they're worth are they, it. Are the guys are, are they getting paid too much? I don't think so. I I, I definitely don't think so. I, I think I think if any sport should be paid the most, it should be the NFL. Yeah. Because I mean, you can play in in Major League Baseball for as long as probably. 15, maybe 20 years, some of those guys play. Basketball, you can play for a long time. The average career for NFL players is three and a half years. Mm -hmm. uh, the majority of the NFL players, when they get done playing, playing ball, they have some type of ailment. Uh, mm -hmm. It's either your shoulder or your knees or your dementia or you know, the concussion thing that's what's happening right now. So I think if you can get it, man, get it. Get, it, get as much money as you can possibly get. Yeah. And Tony, if, if I know you don't think that the Patriots have anything to do with the deflated balls. But being a former Patriot, let's just say the league does determine that Brady and or Belichick knew the balls had been deflated. Mm -hmm. What do you think should happen? Well, I think it's going to be something uh, like they did with the New Orleans, with, with, the, with the Saints. Uh, I think, you think Belichick will get a year off? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and the only reason why is because of all, that, all that's happened in this past year. With Ray Rice and, and you know yeah. and, and the, the other running back, I can't even think of his name right now, um, because they didn't get it right with those guys. They, they didn't mm -hmm. get it right with Ray Rice. So now they have to get it right. That's why this investigation is taking what three weeks? Come on, I mean to investigate what happened with the balls from from one hour to a, to another hour to another hour. This is gonna you gonna you tell me it's gonna take three weeks? They haven't interviewed Tom Brady yet. I mean, if anybody you want to interview, you want to interview him. 
because he he has a lot to do with where, yeah, what think. those balls and how those balls feel. <laughs> it's going to be just like the Saturday Night Live skit. Though. He's gonna, look, ask the, ask the equipment manager. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. <laughs> Tony Collins, the great Tony Collins. Uh, let's talk about uh, Tony Collins, the person. You know, you've uh, – You've been honest about the fact that that you've had some hard knocks and, mm-hmm. and uh, made some mistakes in your career, and uh, but you're one of those guys that realize that and bounce back, doing motivational speaking these days and and trying to uh, talk to younger people about making good decisions. Talk about all that. Well, you know, it, the the thing is, God spared my life, man. I, I made some choices when I was in the league that weren't so good, man. weren't good at all, and and there was a few times, and I, and I, I documented in my book where. You know, I, I should I should not be here talking to you, man. And and God spared my life, and I always wanted, man, God, why, why, why me? You know, why why am I still living? And you, know, you see all the things that happen to a lot of a lot of people, and they're not here anymore. But I'm still here, and and, and I just sat down and, and was thinking, man, I, I'm, my purpose is, is to give back, is is to tell my story, to let other people know, man, that you know you can you can make good choices. You know, I tell these kids all the time. Uh, the better choices that you make, the more opportunities you're going to receive, and that's what that's what that's what life is all about: making good choices. So, you know, we're all, we're not no one's perfect. We're going to make mistakes, but you know, I, I made some mistakes, and and for 18 years, I I really wasn't really really wasn't living in life. I was just existing. Just just felt bad. I felt like a loser. You know, I got suspended from from the league, and 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 I, and, and I came back, and 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 just just living my life uh, uh, the wrong way. And I, and I wasted 18 years of my life because I felt sorry for myself. I felt, I felt, I felt bad of what I did. I felt ashamed. I didn't even want people who knew, knew who I was. And so um, I met my wife, and, and, and just to make a long story short, man, she changed my way of thinking. She, she really, so I really started thinking positive. I, and, I, and I always was a positive person, and I just started thinking positive. And once I started thinking positive, positive things started to happen for me. Uh, everything started happening. I came back here to school. I graduated at the age of 52. I uh, wrote a book. You know, and, you know, it, all these things were happening because I was making good choices. And so I, I just want to uh, let these young people know that you know you're going to make mistakes, but don't wallow in that mistake. Get up, brush yourself off, and, and you know get get back on the road and hit it again because you know the, the better choices that you make, the more opportunities you're going to receive. I think you just described your golf game too. <laughs> 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 You're right, man. <laughs> and mine too. I'm like, man. You know, it's funny. I have to dust myself off and try again That's every it, time man. I play. That's it. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, talk about your book uh, and w- where it's available. Where can people get your book? It's called my book is called Broken Road: Turning My Mess into a Message. You can go on my uh, website. Uh, it's Tony Collins, B-W-Y-B dot com. Go in there, you order the book. I'll sign it for you. Send it off to you. Uh, it's it's a great read. Uh, it's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a read. I used I, I wanted to, to direct it to to young people, but uh, from what I'm from what I'm understanding, everybody loves it. You know, and and it's great. Uh, Bethany Brashier, that she's right here in town. Uh, she was my ghostwriter, and she did a fantastic job. She did a, a wonderful job. But you said he thought uh, Bethany yeah, worked with you had, on that. Yeah. I, I didn't yeah, realize that. Yeah, she did a fantastic. How long has the book been out? Uh, it's been out now for two years. Has it? Yeah, yeah, now for two years. So it's so well. so uh, again. How do you get it? Go to your website. Website. What, what to- is the website? Tony Collins B W Y B dot com. What does that stand for? Become what you believe. Oh, good. <laughs> Tony Collins B W Y B dot com. Mm-hmm. All right, and uh, get one of the books, and Tony will sign it for it and send it to you. That's it. This has been great, man. Hey, we got we got to do this again. We got to. All gotta, you got to do is call me, man. We got to do. We got to do golf too. I haven't got my free donuts yet, though. Uh, I'm gonna get those for you <laughs> right now. That's coming up during the break. Tony Collins, good to see you, man. Good to see you too. Man. By the way, is that a Super Bowl ring? No, this is this is my East Carolina ring. You know, I I um, I went back to school at the age of 52. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I, I I always tell kids, man, get that piece of paper. You guys, you never, you never, you ne- they can never take that away from you. And at the age of 52, I went back to school. I have an AFC championship ring, but I don't wear that ring because it reminds me of what, how bad we got beat against the, against, <laughs> against the Chicago Bears. <laughs> we, it's, it's what hey, they man. call the loser ring. <laughs> Listen, wear that ring. There, look, you're one, you're one of the elite few human beings that's ever experienced playing in the Super yeah, Bowl. Wear it, that yeah, ring. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it, it was a great experience, and, and, I, and I'm looking forward to this Sunday as well. It's going to be a great game, man. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a good one.
Tony Collins. I love you, man. Good, All right, to, man. See you. Good to see you. Yes, sir. All right, we'll get a break in. We'll come back. McGee's got sports. We'll check with Amanda one more time. you still got time to get a free donut. If you get down here by 9, just so you're listening to us, you'll get I a free donut. I need my donut. I'm going to get Tony's donut for him right now. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. We're on location this morning. We are live at uh, Krispy Kreme. We've had a great morning down here. Great interview with Tony Collins. Boy, what a, what a guy. What a guy, just a super individual, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Fun to hear him talking about being in the Super Bowl and Deflate Gate and all that stuff. But now we got Amanda Tilly with us. Amanda Good is morning. our host this morning. Amanda owns uh, Krispy Kreme locations here in Greenville, Rocky Mount, and Goldsboro. Goldsboro. And uh, we talked about that this morning. We came in here this morning. You had all new furniture in That's here. That's right. We're, we're freshening up a little bit. You guys updated. You guys yep. updated. And we've been giving away uh, Valentine's Donuts this morning. Today kind of officially kicks off the Valentine's season here at Krispy Kreme. And uh, that's a big time of year for you guys. It is. It's huge. Yeah. Thankfully. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And you got now you got four different kind of Valentine donuts, and they're going to be available for the next few weeks. That's right. That's right. Be f- available through February fifteenth. We've got our two heart shaped donuts. One is a chocolate iced with a red drizzle. The other is a white iced with the Valentine colored sprinkles. And then we have our X's and O's, which are literally an X shaped and an O shaped um, that are dipped in white icing with a strawberry um, swirl or. Uh, on top so you get that strawberry flavor with the donut but they're the hugs and kisses so you've got all sorts of options for your valentines this year all right and you can get a valentine dozen that's right and uh you can order you can order them in a, but you, if, if you want dozens for valentines you probably need to order them in advance right I, I strongly recommend ordering in advance valentines is one of our busiest days and if you place your order in advance we go ahead and have it boxed up and bagged and you can you can come in get your donuts and and, and go all right very good and uh, again, uh, thank you for having us here this morning yeah, and giving away the don- people. Still, if you're listening, you got time to get here before nine. <laughs> Don't get a speeding ticket, but uh, if you get here before nine, you get a free one this morning. And Krispy Kreme, of course, the hot light is on this morning. I've been thinking about a hot glazed, a lot actually, Good. but so far I've resisted. You don't want me to resist, do you? No. We encourage everyone to splurge, or at least we'll be worth the splurge when you decide to. How's that? So true. Thank you for having us. Good to to see you. you. All right, Amanda Tilly. All right, uh, six minutes in front of 9 o'clock. Let's check some sports headlines now. Here with sports, here's McGee on sports. All right, and kind of an unprecedented move by head coach Mike Krzyzewski, Duke head coach Mike Krzyzewski on Wednesday or Thursday, that is, announcing that he has dismissed junior guard Rashid Suleiman. Suleiman! From the basketball team, of course, Duke. No, Duke lost to Notre Dame Wednesday night, uh, right, right now, right number four in the country. Rashid Suleiman dismissed from the team. Not a clear explanation yet as to why he was let go, but uh, Coach K saying that when he hasn't consistently lived up to the expectations and characteristics that most Duke basketball players um, live by. Uh, Kentucky ran their uh, unbeaten streak to 20 games last night. Number one in the country, they beat Missouri last night. College basketball tomorrow coming up. North Carolina will be on the road at Louisville, 4 o'clock tip-off. ECU is back in action, hosting Cincinnati on Sunday for 1 o'clock tip inside uh, Williams Arena at Menji's Coliseum. And, of course, Super Bowl 49 coming your way Sunday, 6.30 is the start time. More like between 6.50 and 7 o'clock will be the start time. Katy Perry's a halftime show. Did want to mention, too, Tiger Woods back in action. Hand tough day around round one of the Waste Management Phoenix Open. He is uh, tied right now for 106th place after a 2 over 73. I believe Ryan Palmer, 7 under, leads the field there. So Tiger had a rough start there in round one. I hate it for him. I know you do. I hate it for him. <laughs> Look, just why he, he's, he's ranked 47th in the world right now. That's his lowest wow. ranking since, I think, early 2000s. So. All right, sports update brought to you this hour by our friends at Suddenlink celebrating Switch Fest right now. Suddenlink Switch Fest with Suddenlink's advanced fiber rich network, and they've upgraded all, everyone's, all of the internet speeds uh, in their areas now in Greenville and the surrounding area. And uh, here's their new deal you get uh, standard uh, 50 meg internet. When I say standard, that, that's the standard now, 50 meg. Internet. You also get high definition TV. You get a home phone unlimited plus free showtime. All of that from Suddenlink for just forty-five dollars a month. No contract required. Suddenlink's thirty-day money back, and we promise guarantees are in effect. And of course, Suddenlink Switch Fest is going on right now. Call them at 866-432-1184 and sign up. Remember, signing up online is easier than ever at Suddenlink.com. All right, McGee, good to see you this morning. Good to see you, Hen. Thanks really to Michael. Thanks to Coach Carr, who's got a big game tonight at North Pitt. Yes, Southwest Edgecombe. Go get him, Coach.
Thanks. We moved to 19 Thanks and 0. Thanks to uh, Tony Collins for being here. Thanks to the Fortune Cookies. It's been a great Friday, and now the sun is up. Let's enjoy the weekend, everybody. And we will see you back here Monday morning on Talk of the Town on 103.7 and 94.1.